Hey everybody, okay. I just want to do a little bit of video. I'm going to kind of jump in my time machine because I've got some pretty big projects coming up in the near future. I'm going to be doing a few big builds. Obviously, I'm going to be selling them later. But if you're going to be getting into content creating, I wanted to kind of give you a rundown on where I started, how I started, how simple it starts out, and how demanding it can end. Okay, so start out with your phone. You're going to need a few apps. Apple makes some really great apps, really great apps. They make um, one app for just video editing called iMovie. You can do almost everything you need to do right in your phone. Awesome. But this is about hardware today. So some of the things that you're going to need when you first start out, obviously, is you're going to need some lighting. Number two, everybody's seen ring lights. Some of them have mirrors in them. If you're going to be working on a bench, some don't. I have one with a mirror, another mirror, a magnifying glass. Take the mirror thing back because I'd be looking at myself but, well, crazy. Anyways, for overhead lights, I started out and, and my videos always looked yellow and I just couldn't get it. So I started doing some reading and one of my favorite sites for learning things, Think Media there's a whole slew of video and audio geniuses that, that are there. They're, they're incredible. Um, Alpha Gaming, another great site. Um, there's some really, really great gaming sites, and we're going to get a little into that later on. But for content creating, once you get your camera set up, now I went from an older phone to a 12 to a 13 Pro, beautiful video the thing with a with is you can get gorgeous video but you can't get that field of depth or depth of field I've heard it called both where you can sit down and get that blurry background if you want it you don't need to have it it doesn't matter the lighting is is everything to do with it so what you're going to need is some good lighting so I ended up finding out to get back to the yellow lighting I went out and I knew I needed to light my room up better. So I ended up buying an extender. I know, look at this thing. Isn't that odd looking? I never really seen one before. Other people have. I was like amazed when I seen it. But these lights are soft lights and they're pure lights. They don't give any yellow. Everything is pure white light and it's soft. You don't get that banging brightness that you can get from some lights. Good investment if you need some overhead lighting, like $10, $15 for this, and the lights are a few bucks more than your average light. I mean, you can get really expensive with these. You can later on get into getting key lights, soft boxes, and whatnot. And speaking of key lighting, other things that are going to help you. Something like this that goes on the camera. Or on your phone, you can get the adapters. Now this thing, it's still not charged all the way. You can take this, I don't want to blind everybody, so put it on an angle here. And you can dim it, brighten it. I just did that backwards, didn't I? Dim it, brighten it. Let's put it in the middle. And then over on this side, you can change whether it's hot or cold. Cold gives you more of a bluish color, like a little blue tint. This right here is set in the middle to like medium warm. <laughs> and then you can go hot by adding on some more yellow. I don't know if you can really see. See my face there? No, we'll change it. That's, that, that's hot. Now we're starting to get in the middle. Now we're going to go cold. So you can see how the sh shades change. Now I don't want to keep this be a too long of a video. Now Elgato, 
Logitech makes some really nice key lights. They're small. I've got one up here. I'll show it to you after. Right now, my phone's on a mount. But some of the things you're going to need now when you start to do your streaming is I started out with my content using telephone. Telephone. Yes, the telephone. Camera. For streaming, I ended up moving on to the Logitech C920. They make a C922, and they also make another one that's... I can't remember the name of it. I never bought it because I ended up getting my next camera, a webcam. Again, digital, no field of depth, depth of field. Again, everybody calls it something different. Beautiful camera, 4K30. Has a huge lens on it compared to the little pinhole that you get with a Logitech. And don't get me wrong, there's still, there's still people out there using Logitechs that have hundreds of thousands of viewers. It's not about your equipment, it's about your content. Great camera, comes with a good application. USB-C in the back tends to get really hot now I ended up purchasing this and then a little while later Elgato and I am an Elgato fanatic you'll see that in a few I have an Elgato stream deck I have Elgato cam links I have Elgato boom arms I I love Elgato products I just think they make some of the best products and along with their hardware especially audio video they make what makes them so good is their the programming they always come out with good solid programming that really blows you away the Ava media you got to go in and do a lot of tweaking yourself to get it I found the Ava media camera to be very very I want to say heavy on the colors, um, overexposed in some areas. Um, I did get it down there by watching um, Harris on Alpha Gaming, kind of explained how to get the levels, but it's still like the reds are like really, really deep. Um, so I ended up buying, and th this was a $250 camera when it came out. I know, a lot of money for a webcam. 199 the Elgato face cam comes with a program and what's great about this camera again USB-C pops down stick it right on your monitor you can do artificial background blurring for that field of depth I call it field of depth and that's what I'm gonna call it field of depth where you get that blurring in the back but artificial never comes close to a camera so long story short this is 1080p 60 is the highest it will go I know that's 4k but look at the size of the lens on that some people call it glass some people call it lenses comes with a little cover that snaps over there this one has its own built on I find that this camera it's 24 millimeter. It gives you a 24 millimeter range. For most streamers, most people, they want 18 to 16. It has built-in zoom, and the colors in it are almost spot on. And when you picture, when you're in OBS and you downsize your picture by two, um, say three inches by two inches, you put it up in the corner of the screen. You're not going to notice a big, big difference between 1080 and 4K. Now, when you're going full screen, you will see a difference in how sharp the video is, the, how rich the color is. But with this camera, I stand by this Elgato camera all day long. It, it, it's, it's awesome. And the, one of the best things about this, other than the program that comes with it, is it has a little chip inside of it. When you, when you do all your settings, get your color exactly where you want it, you hit a save button and it saves it to the chip internally on the camera. 
So you can take this anywhere you want, drop it, put it on something else, and bingo, you have all your settings all ready to go. Elgato, they always think of everything. I am not sponsored by any way, by anyone at this time with any of the things. So we covered some cameras, we covered where you start. Most people start with a phone and a small mic. Graduate to webcams. The phone's always great for content, although with a telephone like my iPhone, you can use a program where you can hook up a USB. And I, I have it on my computer. Um, it's, it's an Elgato program, a webcam program, and it turns your phone into a webcam. You have to put it on a, a stand and put beautiful picture it gives. But again, it's still digital and you don't get that same that same field. Okay, so we covered some lights, we covered some cameras. And now, don't be shy. If any of you have any questions on any of this stuff, hit me up. Oh yeah, and don't forget to give me a like for doing this video. This stuff does take time, and it's free. Or a thumbs down. But let's keep that algorithm going. That's what helps. Whether they're up or down, it helps. Okay. We can move on, as you can see, the next thing into sound. I ended up going with a Blue Yeti. It was a, it was a good USB mic to start out with. From there, I tried a few different mics, and then I had some companies start sending me mics. Um, I'm really not gonna get into mentioning all their names right now, but some of them are like, well, I will, I'll mention a couple of Fi Fang, um, they made a good mic, and just a, just a few, Movo, great company. Um, Rode, another great company. But I ended up going with the Rode Pod mic. I like the sound of it. It has a built-in pop filter in it. I found that my plosives, maybe I pronounce my words a little heavy on the P's and the S's and the B's, but... I didn't find that the pop filter in it was crushing crushing it the way I wanted. So I did a video on making my own. You know what this is. Goes through the desk, cables go through there. Voila. Okay, get out of here. I ended up painting it black. It fit right over my mic. Like a glove. It improved my sound, I thought. 100%. Um, my buddy on Discord, he even said that it really smoothed everything right out with the plosives, the P's, the B's, the S's. Um, you can also take care of that when you get mics in programs, and I'll go over that real quick. Okay, so right now we're going to step back and we're going to zoom in on the desk and we're going to talk about a few of the products that I have on my desk and I'm going to show and explain to you where I went from there going over to a mirrorless camera, a heavy duty stand, um, tripod and whatnot. So I'm going to have to break off for a second and set that up. Okay I just wanted to break off for a minute real quick. This is another key light. This one's made by Logitech. Elgato makes some really nice ones. I find this one works fine for me. Some people said they think the Elgato's better. I'm not sure. But what's great about the Elgato products and the Logitech is even like this one, Logitech did make a program. I can control the heat. It's hard to see. Yeah, you can't really tell with the phone when it's hot, when it's cold. I can see it with my eyes, but again, I can control the brightness through a program. Boom, you can see that. Down. Another thing that you will need, if you're gonna be going with an XLR mic, such as the pod, is a, um, this is a Telecom Go XLR. This is a mini. 
it's a smaller mixer and it gives power to feed the microphone because it's not a USB. It's one of them big old three button plug. And is my little no numpad Asus. Why ain't it lit up? I'll have to. I think I unplugged the wrong thing. Okay, no biggie. Keypad. Another thing, I'm sorry, I got a little thing there. Another thing that's going to come in handy for controlling things is the Elgato Stream Deck. This is probably like the best thing ever invented, <laughs> invented since the wheel. All bread, or even money. Well, they cost money, but things awesome. You're also going to need a lot of USB hubs. I put mine on top of the desk because they rarely get seen. If I was going to be filming my desk where it was on a desk all the time, I probably would have put everything underneath it. Now, you can see I've got a key light there. Let's take a step over here. Now, for a backup mic, I ended up going with the Elgato Wave 3. What an incredible microphone. When you get this, it's only going to come on like a U-bracket. You end up buying the shock mount, and you can buy the pop filter. Elgato thinks of everything. Just basically bingo, and it pops on kind of like that. Yeah, I think I need two hands, but close enough. Okay, that's a key light. That's my computer. Oop, get my hand out of the way. Yep, this is Master Chief. Okay, there's a garbage bag. These kind of do the trick for little videos. You can put a phone holder on them, but they would really do suck. If you're going to be getting something, which I'm going to show you how to use this even more in a minute. Okay, people, we are back. Now, on the subject of streaming, if you're going to be getting into streaming, they make... $20 capture cards that you can get but you'll never get a capture card EVGA is actually making some pretty nice ones I've got a couple of them in the other room um, that I'm going to be selling they came with a bundle of uh, stuff that I bought video cards and CPUs and stuff like that um, basically HDMI in USB-C out to the computer that gives you a video signal feeds it into the computer this is what carries the HDMI signal into the back a is it the video card yeah it comes out video card captures the video gets fed into the computer yeah okay and this is if you want to like run it through when you want to do a, a um, it's called pass-through. You can go straight through and this will show put on a monitor. Great capture card if you're going to be doing game capture. And I tried using it when I, when I hooked up my camera to, to um, and it worked. You, you can use it a, as like a cam link, but it's really not made for that. It's more of a game capture card. Now, to move on, they've got the Elgato Cam Link 4. This is plug and play. If you're going to be using a camera, now my camera that I'm going to be showing you, I can hook right up USB and I can play video. I can, I can stream, do whatever through USB. But I notice you can't get the same quality picture. I found I can get a lot better quality picture going with the cam link all of these are 3.0 I don't know if it's gen 1 or gen 2 plug and play HDMI in USB HDMI I'm sorry USB into your computer HDMI out so you end up with a full-size HDMI to an HDMI I think it's mini which goes into your camera Okay, so we are done with that stuff for now because how all that is used and operates a whole different animal. 
with the phone, you're gonna need a gimbal. You hook your phone up to this, you're walking around, it basically keeps everything, it floats, keeps everything, well, it's kind of, it's not working right now, but keeps everything nice and level. So whether you raise the phone, drop the phone, it stays right on par. Now, when you start graduating on to the big boy stuff, I ended up going out and I bought a Sony ZV-1 camera. I heard so much about these. It's probably, it, it's a cheap camera. Cheap meaning that it's, it's like an easy $800 with no attachments. The reason I'm saying it's cheap is because some of the top of the line cameras that you're using for content creating are even just streaming 4K. This will stream 4K 30. Some of them will stream 4K 120. But you're talking about, I, I've seen some of these up to 5,000. Not this one, but other ones. Big money. So when I'm saying cheap, this is cheap for a camera that you can plug and play. I can go USB, like I was saying before. I can go U. Well, you've got your microphone input. You got your USB. No, you got your um, yeah, your USB right here up the top. Your HDMI. I bought. They call this a rig to give it a little more oomph to it. I can also put more attachments to the side as well as on the bottom and another reason with this is I couldn't I couldn't you, you if you're going to do constant filming you need a dummy battery basically it looks like the regular small little square battery that goes inside with alongside of the um, the SSD card a micro SD card whatever they want to call them and uh, the batteries run out so fast. So you get a dummy battery, it goes to a power block, and you can run endlessly. The thing with this camera is, and a lot of cameras, they'll get hot and shut off. So in the settings, you can put it from standard to high temperature. So it doesn't burn the camera up. It just allows it to run at a warmer temperature. And you can also, depending on what type of microphone you're using, and how you get your sound settings. You can also get a little fan or something and blow it on there. I found that I could do that, get away without even hearing a fan, and it keeps the camera nice and cool. Another great thing that's probably one of the most important features on a camera. You want to flip out screen. Some of them pop up, but this is the way you want it. This is a screen protector, and for some reason, it just wouldn't take at the corner, but regardless, it's protecting my screen. That's all that matters. Okay, so this camera gives a 24 millimeter picture. Um, the problem with the 24 millimeter in this is in 1080p, 24 millimeter is not bad, but it's not ideal. You're still getting a pretty big, safe talking headshot. So, and even worse, when you use motion stabilizer or you're going to 4K, it crops it down even more. So you end up with less video. <laughs> so the only fix I could find for from Olanzi, WL-2, this is a attachment because this doesn't have interchangeable lenses or glass. This is fixed. It comes with a few different parts. You have your main cover, and it comes with this right here is an attachment that gets, it's basically like a heavy duty. It, you'd have to pull hard. I, I would probably have to use something to get it off because I wouldn't even want to pull it that hard to get that tape off of there that's holding this little platter on. From there, what you need to do, I've got a filter coming in that's going to go on the inside of this that protects the glass. It's a UV filter. If you put this on, it turns it into what they call a micro 
lens, I can basically zoom like right in on a beetle bug's, uh, yeah, beetle bug, like see like every little spot on it. You can get like really close and super clear. Am I even putting this on right? No. This is the one that goes on there. My bad. That'll explain why it wasn't fitting. And the, the thread is so fine, it's ridiculous. Okay, so once you get that on, now it would be in what they call that little micro, nano, super magnified thing. Along with that, this turns it into a 18 millimeter widescreen shot. So even when I go 4K and it crops, I can at least get it down to around maybe 20, maybe 21 or 22, which is still better than 24 that you get normally. And in 1080p, I can get a good solid 18 millimeters. So basically what you're gonna get is probably, if you're looking at this picture right now and you see what you can see, add six inches onto each side keeping the same basic size of the main object that you're looking at, but getting more. And with this, I found no distortion whatsoever. Same thing, screws right on. Now, again, like I said, I did get this. It's easier to hold. I'll give you a quick demonstration. Add some power to it. Bingo. Pops right out. You got your picture and it flips right around and follows you. So I can take this, flip it towards me, the picture flips right over and I can look at what's going on. It's a lot easier to keep an eye on where your head is in the video, where you're scented and whatnot. Next. One of the reasons I picked this up is you always need to have light. Hot shoe, cold shoe, or vice versa. The shoes always get me confused. Oh, that's wicked snug, okay. And one of the most important things is sound. Now, believe it or not, they make some mega money, big money, shotgun mics, um, lab mics, or I can hook up my pod mic, or my wave mic. But the thing is, is going directly from a shotgun mic, or a plugged in lavalier mic into the camera, you get very little lag. If you use OBS, and you go directly into OBS, with your sound, and then your video, it's going to be offset. So you have to go inside of the advanced sound features and readjust your settings so you can get your mouth to move with the sound. It, 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 other than that, it's like one of them old like Godzilla movies where the guy would be talking and you'd hear the talking and the mouth was like going totally in a different direction. And what happens with these is these just go right on here. Wow, that one goes on nice and smooth. Now, $30. Again, Think Media. I was watching them. This guy compared it and gave it pretty close rating to like a Rode shotgun mic, which is like a $200 mic versus a $30 mic with a little bit of adjusting. Incredible. And I've tested it and it is clear. It's clean. And I didn't even add filters. So you can get away and get some really, really good. Okay. 
but you can get some really good stuff, really good components for really small money. This lens, $50. To go out and buy a lens for a camera where it snaps on, you're talking anywhere maybe from 75 three four hundred dollars depending on what type of lens you're getting okay so I figured I might as well come back real quick and just go over the camera putting it together I should put the lens protector on here I wish I, I, I've got to pick up a rubber one because these aluminum ones are a pain in the ass thread is so fine it's like oh my god okay so what you're going to do to start adding features onto this oh I know why this didn't fit before because it was backwards okay so these are kind of as you can see there's a little spaces in there that's made to give a little bit so you can pop these in here like so and it's done. From there, take your camera, slide it on. Comes with a little, a little plastic screw down nut kind of thing, and it locks it right on. So if you're wondering, where do you do with the mic? Well, you can't do nothing with it at this time. Other than yeah, if I move this all the way to the side, but I'd rather keep it this way. Nope, yeah, the clip one in bingo but what's great about these little lights is you can add more lights or you can add your mic again you got your little wheel on here now I know it's a big mic but with these type of mics the shotgun mics you're talking sound going directly in there. You, you, you want this, if, you, if you're spending big, big money, you can get a more powerful mic, but you want to be able to pick up the sound, so the length on it really does help. You have an on-off button here. You can go zero decibels, or you can pump it up. This is basically a boost, 10 decibel boost. If you leave this up, this is on. This is basically what controls your bass or your deeper sounds so you can control some of the background noise. Um, you're probably still gonna pick it up with these regular settings on here, um, but in OBS, you'll have no problem with the filters being able to set up a noise gate or a noise suppressor, suppression filter and get rid of that stuff. And that's all pretty easy to learn too. And what I noticed is these little hot shoes or cold shoes they never go all the way in you always get a little bit of it sticking out so once it's tight okay I know it looks crazy and it is crazy but it is what it is you get everything lined up the way you want. You can adjust the mic along with the light pointing down at you. And now I'm gonna show you exactly how and easy this is to hook up to your tripod. Okay, I know the autofocus on the telephone isn't quite as fast as it is on the, the camera. Um, these Sony ZV-1 cameras, and they also have a 
I think it's an EZ10 or a Z, ZV10, the newer one that has interchangeable um, lenses. I call them lenses. I don't know what you know why some people the the, the terminology in the with the in the professional field is they call it glass. Well, yeah, technically it is glass, but still a freaking lens. Um, this is what I love about this thing. Pop this down, and this tripod has a little handle on it. Gotta love it makes life so much easier instead of playing around screwing away yeah that didn't come up right instead of playing around messing around screwing the thing in spinning the camera around like a like like crazy you, you just pull this out bad boys on now there's so many more things that you can do with this. If you want to go 45 with this camera, you can lift it. Bingo. You can go portrait mode. You can bring it down even more. Okay, we're going to bring it back. I like to leave it just up a little bit because my floor is a little bit off. It's not 100% straight where I like it. Okay, I'll get the rest later. Again, so you got that. You got another handle right here to control your tilts. You got another knob right here to control your pan. I always wondered why they called it tilt pan zoom. Tilt. Pin. Zoom. I'm not going to start doing a jiggle for you. 